Now I know folks are feeling and experiencing a range of emotions right now. I get it. <laughs> but we must accept the results of this election. The US presidential election has been the most intense, polarizing and riveting election. So why did Kamala Harris lose, who was endorsed by a huge number of celebrities and Democrats? What went wrong? Was her election campaign flawed? Or is Joe Biden to be blamed for Kamala Harris's historic loss? Well, angry and shocked Democrats have begun soul-searching to determine just what went wrong after Kamala Harris suffered an election loss that has left the party dumbfounded. Well, there's plenty of blame going around. But most of the finger-pointing isn't aimed at Harris. Instead, some of the sharpest criticism is focused on President Joe Biden for moving forward with a catastrophic re-election bid that set the stage for this failure. Donald Trump, meanwhile, hammered home his campaign main focus points, which were immigration and economy. President-elect Donald Trump's victory clearly highlights those frustrations of millions of voters, with many Americans noting that they're still hurting from the highest inflation at 40 years and clearly dissatisfied with the nation's economic trajectory. Trump ran on a campaign that vowed to tackle all of those issues. He pledged to end the inflation nightmare and to bring prices down very quickly. Trump also offered a myriad of tax cuts to various groups ranging from senior citizens to homeowners as well as to finance and some of those cuts through new tariffs on imports from China and other nations and to deport millions of undocumented immigrants. We're going to have to seal up those borders and we're going to have to let people come into our country. We want people to come back in, but we have to, we have to let them come back in, but they have to come in legally they have to come in legally Kamala Harris meanwhile inherited president Joe Biden's political team with some of the former president Barack Obama's team who had joined in and now they will all be very eager to detach themselves from this historic loss after Joe Biden dropped out of the race following a disastrous debate performance, Kamala Harris was anointed to the top of the ticket by passing the scrutiny of a primary without even a single vote being cast. Our campaign has tapped into the ambitions, the aspirations and the dreams of the American people. And we know it is time for a new generation of leadership in America. Kamala Harris then began her campaign promising a new generation of leadership. The forward-looking candidate, rallying women around abortion rights, vowed to win back working-class voters by focusing on economic issues including rising costs and housing affordability. She managed to generate a wave of momentum initially, a star-studded endorsement list that included Taylor Swift and record-setting donations. But Kamala Harris couldn't really shake the anti-Biden sentiment that permeated much of the electorate. But given Harris's status as a sitting vice president, she never really could fit the mold of a traditional change candidate. And she remained tied to Joe Biden, staying loyal to him even as Americans made it amply clear that they disapproved of his handling of inflation and migration at the southern border. Kamala Harris even underperformed among the black and Latino voters. Trump's victory became all but certain when the former president was the projected winner of the battleground crucial state of Pennsylvania and its 19 electoral votes. It's a state that Democrats had lost only once since 1988, and that came in 2016 with Trump's victory over Hillary Clinton. The Trump campaign also put a great deal of effort in persuading the black and Latino voters to defect from the Democratic Party and perhaps those efforts paid off. In fact, in North Carolina, exit polls showed Trump boosting his share of the black vote to 12% from 5%. Latino voters took a big right turn in an election dominated by voter outrage over the high cost of food and housing that has helped Donald Trump secure a second term in the White House. Meanwhile, Vice President Kamala Harris finished with a slim majority of support from the Hispanic voters at 53%, while Trump vacuumed up about 45% of that vote, which is a 13-point increase from 2020 and a record high for the Republican presidential nominee, according to exit polls. Now, what really truly gave an edge to Trump? 
From the beginning of the election to its final days, Latino voters in interviews and polls consistently name the economy, inflation or higher costs as their priority and number one issue. Because over the last eight years, Donald Trump has become more confused, more unstable and more angry. And it is clear he has become increasingly unhinged. So did Harris focus too much on Trump? Well, in the final weeks of the campaign, Harris did escalate her rhetoric, calling the former president a fascist, warning that he's unhinged and unstable, and highlighting the assessment of Trump's former White House chief of staff, John Kelly, who alleged that Trump had made admiring statements about Adolf Hitler. She increasingly leaned into framing the election as a fight for democracy, much like Joe Biden did before he dropped out of the race in 2024. Kamala Harris's attacks became increasingly pointed and fierce towards Donald Trump. And that perhaps failed to make the desired impact and that she made the mistake by hammering the wrong nail. Many say that this was a colossal failure for Kamala Harris's campaign to shine the spotlight on Trump more than her very own ideas for the nation. Voters had already factored in Trump's flaws and had taken a measure. They wanted to know about Harris's plans for the first year of her administration. Kamala Harris, a champion of women's rights who prioritized productive rights and gender equality, had campaigned very aggressively on restoring abortion access, did win female voters by a sizable 54% to 44% margin according to polls, but it was still a slimmer margin than Biden's 57% to 42% performance with women in 2020. Trump won the male voters over Kamala Harris by the same 54% to 44% margin as Harris won women. Abortion ended up not really being the galvanizing force that it was in 2022 when Democrats exceeded expectations in the midterms. I know many people feel like we are entering a dark time. But for the benefit of us all, I hope that is not the case. But here's the thing, America, if it is, let us fill the sky with the light of a brilliant, brilliant billion of stars. The light, the light of optimism, of faith, of truth, and service. Harris's loss marks the second time in three election cycles that Democrats have fielded a female presidential candidate in the hope of making history, only to lose both times to Donald Trump. Clearly, America seems to have forgotten Trump's well-documented baggage of criminal indictments, sexual assault acquisitions, two impeachments and his role in the Jan 6, 2021 attack on the Capitol. Or is there perhaps a fundamental issue of having a woman as a leader? Do Americans actually have a woman problem? Will the glass ceiling ever break?